Daniel chapter number 10, we will begin our text with verse number 1. Daniel chapter 10, verse number 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of this month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with the gold of Euphaz. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell on them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palm of my hands and said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. And while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I've come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the last days. For the vision refers to yet many days to come. And when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips and I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me and I've, I've retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is there any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O oh, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And he said, Do you know why I have come to you? And I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the ministry of his word. Amen. I don't know if what I'll do this morning will just be preaching or if I if I'm just going to share with you but as we have over the last month as a body as a community seen something that's unusual different than anything I've seen this level of sorrow and loss and grief So many have passed away. So many in such a short time. And everyone that happens, I 
have, have been shocked that another one, another loss, another sickness, another Sister Adams falling in the hospital, probably going to be in there in a couple of weeks. And as, as, as this has, has all been happening, as the Lord has been doing something and stirring in the young people and in a spirit of revival, I, I, I don't have answers as to why. But what I bring myself to is we... Now, when we look and see what's going on, when you see suffering, you decide how are you going to respond to it. Paul and Silas were whipped and thrown in prison, beaten with a a, a torture that put them on the brink of death, put in a dark dungeon chained and the way they responded to it the attack the suffering was this is a time when we need to pray and worship Jehoshaphat when he was surrounded and looked like the people would be annihilated said this is a time that we need to seek the Lord. I want to call us today to a time of prayer and fasting. Daniel had this vision and he didn't know what it meant. And... He decided because he didn't know what it meant and he was troubled and the Scripture says he was in great sorrow that Daniel said, I'm going to seek the Lord. And he went into a time of prayer and fasting. Said he didn't eat any pleasant food. I don't know about you, but for me, that'd be about all food. They're eating too much food I don't like. But he turned to fasting and prayer. And what Daniel doesn't know and what Daniel doesn't see is that while he is praying and fasting, there are things that are going on in the spirit world that he doesn't recognize. He's about to get a breakthrough and there is an increased spiritual warfare that always precedes it. Before you get to the next level... You got to fight and you got to press in. And Jesus, when his disciples struggled with casting out a demon and they came to him after he cast it out, they said, Lord, why couldn't we do that? And Jesus said, But this kind doesn't come out but by prayer and fasting. That there are some spiritual victories that you need additional weapons for. You don't go into a battle where the other guy's got a tank with a baseball bat. If they've got a tank, you better suit up and get you a weapon that's going to match or outmatch what your adversary has. And Jesus said that if we want spiritual battles and spiritual warfare on steroids, that we, we, we can't just do things as usual but that we've got to do prayer and fasting. That word fast, that's a, that, that's a four-letter word we don't like, do we? That's, that, 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 that troubles us. Like, Pastor, could you, could you have called for anything else? Can we all just like and share it on Facebook? And then, you know, as long as you share this and forward it to a hundred friends, then that, that'll bring revival or, or that'll get... But, but no, there, there, there are some things that you get with God when you say, Lord, I want what you have more than what I feel. 
And 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 Jesus said that this this kind doesn't come out but by prayer and a fasting. Peter said that judgment first begins at the house of God. I've been I've been all the things that go on in the in the world in the news. You know, just being very transparent and honest with you this morning, I find it disturbing that somebody will every day wrap their head in a turban, dress in a way that made the old time Pentecostals look like they're liberal. They cover up so much. Because they believe a lie. And we in the church who have the truth complain about small sacrifices. I find it bothering that somebody believes a lie enough that they'll strap bombs to themselves and go and give up their life. But when we call the people of God who've been saved and God's done miracle after miracle and healing after healing, and we call you to prayer meeting, you can't come because you're tired. I find it disturbing that people will sacrifice so much because they believe a lie. We in church don't want the music to go too long because we're hungry. Judgment. I think our land stands on the brink of either judgment or revival. Amen. I think our homes stand on the brink of judgment or revival. Before the great deliverance of the children of God came out of Egypt, there had been many miracles that had happened. There had been locusts and frogs and water turned to blood and flies. There was one last miracle. And this miracle wasn't one that just Moses and Aaron did. This was a miracle that everybody had to participate in. And your way of participating was either by faith or by fear. Moses said that there is a death angel that's going to come through the land. There's judgment that's sweeping through the land. But if you want to believe and have faith, there is a way that while judgment falls all around you, you can be protected. And it is if the blood of the Lamb is applied to the doorpost of your home. That there, while there is judgment around, while the, while there may be judgment that falls uh, around us in our country, it may fall in 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 in, 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 in homes all around us. That there is a way that the people of God can find a place of safety and protection, and it comes when we have the faith to apply the blood of the Lamb to the doorposts of our home. We've got to plead the blood over our home. I've I've, I've been been reading and hearing and and, and studying the the, the revival that happened that birthed the Pentecostal movement a little over a hundred years ago. And and, you know, I read some of the folks in that revival took communion every day. They understood the power of the blood. 
You see, everybody in the home didn't even have to be a believer in Exodus. Just one. Just as long as there was one that said, this home is marked by the blood. You might have a child that's not saved. You might have a husband that's not saved. You might have a wife that's not saved. You might have people in your family that aren't saved. But you can put the blood and put it over the doorpost of your home and see your family protected and see them saved. And though there might be a death angel and a spirit of death around, there can be the power of the blood. Blood protecting. I'm calling us to time of prayer, a time of fasting, and to a time of communion. I want us, at least for the next ten days, maybe the next three weeks, we'll we'll, we'll see where, where the Lord leads. But to turn our hearts toward the Lord and say, God... We are turning to You in prayer, in fasting, and in communion. Turn to the Lord in repentance. We, as the people of God, need to repent. We've tolerated our own sin when God will give us the victory. If we'll ask Him. We've tolerated compromise when the Lord can give us holiness if we'll seek Him. We, 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 we talk about being saved, but our forefathers in the faith believed in this thing called sanctification. And, 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 and we, we, we've come to this idea that it's gradual. And, 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 and doctrinally, there, there, there's some, some elements and some scriptures there. But we've let our idea of it being gradual be an excuse for not laying down and getting delivered of what God wants to set us free from. They prayed until they believed God had given them the victory over sin. And I wonder if we've tolerated idols and we've tolerated things in our life that are polluting the river of God when God wants to allow us to be filled with the Spirit. God help us. Daniel, he prayed, he sought the Lord. And he found out, not until after he got a breakthrough, that what was going on in the unseen world was that there were territorial demons that didn't want to give up their dominion. Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That The enemy has a kingdom and he's organized and he has, he has demon spirits that are in charge of areas and families. And it's time that we break through through prayer and fasting and that we topple some of the things that have had dominion in this holler for the last generation. We topple some of the things that have had dominion in our families for generations and that through prayer and fasting that we can advance the kingdom and His kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven. That there were different levels of authority, but His prayer and His fasting caused there to be a change in warfare. That God sent additional reinforcement. I don't know if we quite understand what goes on. Angels warring and spirits of God that are dispatched. 
We don't fully understand it. Daniel, while he was praying and he, he was fasting, he didn't understand what was going on behind the scenes, but his prayers were moving heaven and earth and moving legions of angels and moving the, moving the, the, the forces of God to overthrow the powers of the enemy. That for us to get through to new levels of what God has for us, we have to fight new devils that are going to come against us. The enemy is not going to take it sitting down. But Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We've got to have a a determination and a force about us that we are going to press through to victory. How do we respond to suffering? I imagine that Paul and Silas, if they'd been part of... 2017 American church that have been in that prison and said well, Lord we did our best to obey you and look what happened threatening to backslide go back to Antioch I must have missed God coming out here to Philippi They didn't understand until the end was that all of that suffering was a setup because there was a jailer in there that needed to hear the gospel. A jailer in there that needed to see a sign of God's power. A jailer and his family there that needed a spiritual breakthrough. And that God set it up and God put them there and God let them go through all of that stuff so that when they got there, if they had the determination to continue to keep on praying and to keep on worshiping and to keep on singing and not to allow the enemy to stop their praise and not to allow the enemy to stop their prayer life that then there would be an even greater miracle than what they had seen up to that point. And they prayed and they sang and God gave a breakthrough. What I'm calling us to do is to pray, to fast, to worship, And to take communion while there's still wounds on our body. While there's still pain in our soul. While there's still doubts and confusion in our mind wondering, Lord, did you forget where I'm at? That even then, we still lift our hands and say, you know what? I'll worship you anyway, God. I don't worship you because of what you've done. I worship you because of who you are. I worship you, Lord, because you're worthy. I'm going to worship you even through my pain. And like Job said, even though he slay me, yet will I serve him. God, I will worship through this. Daniel prayed and he pressed through. And what he had at the end of that time of fasting... It was a powerful vision. And and, and when you look at the passage, it almost seems like there's two different beings that he sees. Because he sees one being that talks about going and wrestling with the prince of Persia and having to go back and fight the prince of Persia. And then he, he, he talks about this other being that sounds very similar to what John saw in the book of Revelation when he said, when I saw him, I fell as a dead man. There, there, there was this experience that Daniel had where he sees this spiritual being and he's not even able to stand. He doesn't even have strength in his body. He says, I fell, I fell down before him. His voice was the sound of multitudes. His, he had eyes like fire. He it's this revelation that, that, that is beyond anything that he's ever seen, this experience with God. But it's born 
of prayer and fasting. Are we hungry to say, Lord, I've got sorrow, I've got suffering, but I'm going to seek You. I'm going to turn my face toward You. God, all of this, I'm going to put the blood of the Lamb over the doorpost of my home. I'm going to start pleading the blood. See, all this stuff, the enemy can use it to instill fear in you. It can instill fear in you. When you hear about somebody so young dying, the enemy wants to torment you with worry and anxiety. Everything. The enemy wants to crush you with fear, paralyze you with fear. But though the death angel comes, he cannot come where the blood of the Lamb is applied to the home. The Lord can protect you. Protect your family. He can protect your friends. He can protect our young people. God can protect us by the blood of Jesus. I want us to come to the Lord today in a spirit of prayer and turn to Him in prayer and in fasting and see what the Lord will do if we as a church will come to Him in prayer and fasting. And, 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 and how you fast? Daniel, Daniel did a different kind of fast here. You, you, you read of different fasts in Scripture. You read some folks that went 40 days without food. You read some that went 40 days without food or water. Daniel says he went without any pleasant food and he didn't anoint himself. He didn't put on any deodorant for 40 days or for three weeks. There's different kinds of fasting. You can fast from all food together. You can fast from some things. You can, you can, you can, you, you can fast from some meals a day. You can fast from other worldly things. Paul talks about fasting and, 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 and fasting can, can include different kinds of relationships that you fast from. And so your fasting can, can be directed by the Holy Spirit to what does God want you to set aside to say, Lord, I'm seeking You. I'm going without whatever it is. Maybe you go without internet or go without Facebook or go without watching TV or go... Without food, you go without certain foods. You go without coffee. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you go without it. Say, Lord, I'm seeking You. Because I know this, the Scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Isaiah said, you have... Turned my sorrow and my mourning into joy and dancing. That we can. And I believe that with the level of sorrow and suffering, that God has a breakthrough that is just ahead. Some of you that have been shedding tears, are going to see how God has used these things to bring some of your family members to Christ. You see, the Lord has a different purpose. And we don't understand all the purposes of God when we're going through things. It usually is not until after we're done that we understand maybe a little bit of what God was doing. Lazarus was sick. And they sent word and said, bring Jesus, our brother, the one you love, Lazarus. You fellowshiped at our house, Lord, the one you love, he's sick. We know Mary, Martha, Lazarus, the sisters and brother that served Jesus, that Mary was a worshiper. She just loved being at Jesus' feet. Martha complained about it because Mar- Martha was a server. She was busy working. And 
There Mary was just around the altar, worshiping, praising the Lord. And Martha's there getting the dinner ready and getting the basement cleaned up and the chairs straight and getting all the plates and they're doing all the hard work. So Mary had her purpose. And Martha had her purpose. But what was Lazarus' purpose? His purpose. He had to die. Because out of Lazarus' death, if you look at it, that that event, that miracle, that he had been dead so long that all the doctrines of the day said he can't be raised. The Spirit's done departed. There's no way that a resurrection can happen after somebody has been dead for three days. He's been dead so long, they roll the stone back and there's an odor. But when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, that miracle set off a chain of events that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief priests and the Sanhedrin got together and said, we got to kill Lazarus and Jesus because this thing's out of control. It was Lazarus' miracle that set up for the crucifixion of Christ that brought the salvation of the world. Now, that... I'll take Mary's job of being a worshiper. I want to be a worshiper. I don't mind work. I'll be the server, Lord. But the hardest call is that one Lazarus had to answer. But he answered it. And Jesus sees it all differently than we do. Because he understands that death is temporary. That death is but for a moment. That there is a power to his word that can crush the power of death. In hindsight, you can look and see why the Lord set all these things up. It was to bring himself glory. To bring his plan of salvation. I don't know why these things have happened. To give an answer would be like the Lord told Job. He said, Who is this that darkens counsel without knowledge? The Lord said to Job, Hush your mouth. You're, you're giving answers for stuff you have no idea about. Somebody gives a, 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 an answer for, for something that, that, that we as, as people can't understand. The Lord knows. We just got to trust Him. He is in control. Let's yield to Him. Let's seek His face with prayer and fasting and see how all this weeping that's enduring through the night that God is getting ready for the dawning of a new day and joy that's going to come in the morning. As we're in this time, I want to call us to prayer, to worship, to fasting and a communion to seek the face of the Lord and to see what God has in store for us next. Jesus said to the disciples that nobody has ever given up land or houses, father or brother, sister, mother, in this world, but that He won't receive even greater. What we sacrifice for Him, God has a way of answering and restoring and blessing. I believe that there's a joy coming. Salvation in our families. Revival in our families. Revival in this community. And we'll see how God is working all things beautifully by His grace and His power. Would you come to the music Come to a time of prayer. 
I'm going to ask you, starting tomorrow, to turn toward the Lord with prayer, with fasting. And every day that you're able, I want you to just take the Lord's Supper and receive His broken body and His shed blood and the miracle of what He did on the cross. Receive it and apply it to your home and your family every day. And see what God will do. The wonders that the Lord will do among us as we yield to Him and seek His face. Would you come to the altar for a season and time of prayer today?